Welcome to the Mischief. I'm Valen, and this is Witchery Brew Effects Level 2. Now, I'm not going to be going through all of them today, but I will be going through the first couple pages in your Witchery Brews book, which I have here. If you are interested in any of these brews, feel free to click on them, or if you just want to wait, it will automatically play through each one individually. So, let's get started on these effects. So of course with your Witch's Brews book, it helps to have this uh, available to you, and we're doing level 2 today. If you're interested in level 1 or any other levels uh, that may be in there, you'll have to check out other videos that I have, most likely down in the links below or in the information uh, button on the top right. Now, with this, we're going to start at the top, work through a couple of pages here, and then we'll go on to another part uh, on another uh, video. So. Let's get started on our number one brew, and that is going to be here, part lava. Now what I have done on here is I have done one with absolutely minimal effects on there, which means that on this we're doing nether wart because a level two spell is requiring of two, uh, here we go, two capacity in order to uh, uh, get this effect because it's a level two spell. So. We are starting off with some Nether Wart. Now you could use Tear of the Goddess if you want. So like it says here, level 2 effects will require a Nether Wart or Tear of Goddess. Or um, you could toss in a, uh, um, it was a Mandrake and Nether Wart and Tear of Goddess. It doesn't hurt to have extra in there, but it's just wasteful. So I recommend just going for a bit of Nether Wart. It's probably the easiest to come by. Now, uh, once you get that in place, uh, then I toss in the ingredient, and then I would toss in the uh, appropriate, uh, probably gunpowder or water artichoke globe to turn it into a splash potion. Uh, now, if I'm powering it up, then obviously I will be adding in the levels here uh, to increase its power, which is, you know, glowstone, uh, and then potentially uh, the blaze rod and so on. Uh, then, of course, we've got the area effect enhancers here. Now these ones that I'm mostly covering today are not going to be as unique as the level 1 spells in most car in most cases, uh, so they won't uh, necessarily have diverse effects uh, changing for their area effects versus power. But to start with, part lava. So let me grab a couple of these here. We're going to go minimum and maximum. Uh, I'm not even going to uh, bother with these ones. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, so the difference on this is power, increasing the power makes absolutely no difference, but increasing the area of effect on it does. So where can we find some lava to part? Guess where? In the nether. Here we go, and I have my little trusty guardian keeping an eye on the uh, gate, but if I go with the splash brew of lava hold, notice it's called something different than uh, when you're in the book here. If you go in here, it's called part lava. This is very common in uh, witchery that uh, the spells or brews will have differing names. But this is the level one bare minimum, no bonuses. Toss it in and it has to hit a surface and then it will create a gap and space in there just like it did for the level one uh, brew of parting for water, which is pretty darn cool. Now, if I expand this with the really big powerful one, it's a much bigger effect. Now this is only affected by the area of effect add-on. Increasing the power level on this is just wasteful, so I do not recommend you do that. Now, of course, if you, if you have a lot of, um, uh, you know, your uh, effects extending the duration of this, then it can be quite a bit of fun. You can go spelunking, <laughs> looking through the nether, and so on, and it'll, uh, you know, stay in that area. But just so that you're aware, it does have to hit a surface, it's not just a matter of splashing it on some lava. So there you go, nothing really fancy about that, just a way of getting across lava, lava or through it should you need to. And that's all at the cost of cobblestone as the main ingredient. Now let's move on to the next one here, Repel Attacker. Now this one here has a little bit different effect when you increase the power, as a lot of the other ones that I'm going to be covering don't, similar to uh, part lava. Now this one here, I'm going to grab the minimum and maximum, 
and the power increase affects the knockback effect. Now, this one also requires an Ender Bramble, which is crafted in a very special way. Uh, I will not be covering that today, but if you are interested, I will put some kind of link below that will hopefully guide you to uh, the correct answers. Uh, worst case, it, it's involving a mutating sprig, some Ender Pearls, and a bunch of uh, like other stuff like that. But it, it's a fun item that when you walk into... It will randomly teleport you or whoever walked into it 500, up to 500 blocks away in a random direction. So it, it can be quite a, a fun item as well as a trollable one. But uh, using it as an ingredient in this case will have a different effect. So let's go over here. And uh, you know what? I think I need to spawn in something. So let me get um, spiders. Spiders sound good. Drop him down. <laughs> And they're killing him a little too quickly for my taste. All right, so there we go. And now when they hit him, they get a little knockback. Just a little effect. You'll have to excuse the um, the uh, particles that I have going on. It's causing a little bit of lag on this, but uh, I have a lot going on. Oh, that, that was a very poor placement. Let me drop the spider up here. Hit him with a much bigger potion. And we'll watch the fun here. When they uh, decide to hit him, which will take them a second to get up there for a change, we'll see that they just change their mind and don't even want to fight him. Nope, there they go. Oh, pew, pew. <laughs> so you see, they get a knockback effect when they attack the target who's being affected. All right, I removed my uh, particle effects so that they're not uh, obscuring the, the visibility as much. But uh, allow me to drop down another spider. Throw down more of that potion, and pew! <laughs> he gets launched quite a ways. And of course, these guys can be affected by it as well. But there you go. Uh, that was pretty much the uh, repel attacker. It gives you a defensive or a reactionary uh, knockback effect. Now, increasing the power on this one will increase the knockback effect. So uh, you saw level 1 was very, very minor. Level 4 was pretty darn huge, enough that uh, you might be able to kill them with fall damage. Uh, and then, of course, the area of effect only increases the splash area that it affects on these creatures. Uh, so it, it's just when it hits the ground, it'll affect a, a bigger area, that's all. Here we have brew gas immunity. For this, I'm actually going to turn my uh, uh, particles back on. There we go. And it takes a bit of gravel, so it's very minor. Um, but uh, we're going to grab, let's see, the minimum. We're going to grab the maximum. And then we're also going to grab here, a gas brew of slowness. Now, the reason I have the gas brew of slowness is because it's a gas brew, and I wanted something that would work to show you guys what's going on. So start off with, let me put some milk on my hot bar too. Throw this down, and this is the gas brew of slowness. You can see I am slow. I am moving very slowly. I am affected by it. I have slowness 4 for a long time. I'm going to drink that, make it go away. All right, so what this does, these are called splash brews of gas mask once you've created them. But uh, the idea is if you hit yourself with it, and we toss one of these out here so that you can get another one of those. I have gas mask on now. So when I go through here, nothing will affect me. You see, it's just the gas mask effect. Now here's the good thing, is that uh, whether it be a level 4 or a level 1, won't make a difference. It, it uh, gives you immunity to the gas regardless of how strong the gas is. So that can be very beneficial. <laughs> it should help you. I have found a few circumstances where it won't stop things from hurting you though. Uh, for instance, if you have something that does damage, it will it will not stop the damage. It will, uh, in fact, allow damage to get through. Uh, what it will not allow to get through is negative effects. So if you have brews that are causing negative effects like slowness, then it will prevent that kind of negative effect. So if it shows up on the side here, then that's most likely something that it would prevent, provided that it was a gas brew. Once again, this is power effect, nothing. Area of effect just increases the splash area once it's applied if you turn it into a splash potion. Next up, we have poison. This one here is pretty straightforward. It's just like those potions that the witches will throw at you. Uh, the uh, I've got minimum and maximum, and there is an effect difference that power will have in this case. So I am over here. Uh, now, a couple of these guys are werewolves, so they're not actually going to uh, take damage. But these two guys are not werewolves. So allow me to start off with a splash brew of poison on this guy. This is the minimum level. 
<laughs> and you'll see he slowly takes a little bit of damage. And because I hit nearby, I didn't actually hit him. Yeah. There we go. I hit him that time. Yeah, it, if you don't hit him exactly, then, you know, the, the splash radius will have a diminishing effect on him. So if I use the maximum one here, you'll notice a big difference. And, of course, that's a big, bigger area, but you see how fast that is. So, there you go. That's, that's pretty much the difference there. Power will increase the uh, amount of damage. Uh, well, not the amount of damage, how quickly they take damage. The uh, length of time will remain the same unless you change the duration on it, of course. Uh, so, I am actually getting a little lost on my little field of uh, bruise here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then, of course, the area of effect will just increase the uh, splash area so that you can uh, more easily land the uh, splash effects like you're trying to do. Now, regeneration. The opposite, more or less, of the poison effect. Uh, of course, poison, don't forget, will not kill people. They will, it will just bring them down to a half a heart. So, regeneration. I'll grab a small one and a big one, and it's just like poison. Uh, it speeds up the heals and potentially can give more hearts, uh, but it also has, with an increase in area of effect, the uh, effect will be just a bigger splash area. So, let's check this guy out here. You can see he's almost dead. And we toss on here a regeneration potion, which is very, very slow. It's like he, he might have just refilled his hunger bar with how slow that's healing. Now, if we use the level 4 version, it increases really, really fast. Really fast. In fact, it's, it's really great. This is good. And, of course, the uh, durations on these are staying the same. The radius is only affected by the splash area. That doesn't affect anything to do with the power or any additional effects on it. Next up, we have poison. What's this? Well, it's a bit confusing. If you look in your little book here, you'll see that there's poison and that there's poison. The reason for this is unknown to me. I did a lot of testing on this. I could not find a difference, uh, whether they were under regeneration effects, whether it was on a boss creature, um, uh, area of effects, anything like that. It functions exactly the same as the other poison potion. The only difference is it costs more because you also have to add in a fermented spider eye, uh, which, you know, the recipe for a fermented spider eye involves a spider eye, which is all you need for a regular poison one. So I, I don't recommend this version unless you yourself know the answers to it. But otherwise, it's just a duplication of the other poison potion. There may be other uses, but in my testing, I couldn't find it. Fast movement. This one here, pretty straightforward. I mean, we're getting into practically uh, vanilla mechanics by this point. The uh, fast movement allows you to have a speed buff, and the power will increase the speed level. The area of effect just increases the splash area, or the radius that it affects. If I toss one of these on me, you'll see I now have speed for a minute and a half, and it's a regular speed one effect. If I toss the other one on me, maximum level, I have speed four, and you can see my screen perspective just went really wonky and I can run super fast on the ground now which is really cool but I want my vision back there we go much better and what of course do we have that is the opposite of speed well slowness of course uh, as opposed to this one using just sugar this one uses a fermented spider eye and sugar so it will give you the opposite effect uh, with this and this you can therefore get you know similar things to the uh, speed buff where you get slowness throw up the other one and you'll get slowness four now there is a slight difference on this potion and of course you will see my my vision has changed a bit everything's really close to me look I can I can see things really big <laughs> so if you need to look at something really closely this might actually be a good potion for it but um the, uh, the difference on this one is that I think there's some kind of glitch, because if you look here, it says slowness minute 30, minute 30. The best I can get is going to be 45 seconds. So I, I don't know why it does that, but it same as, uh, acts the same as a speed potion in reverse, but for only one half of the time shown on the brew. So if you extend this, maybe things will change, but as it is without any uh, duration extensions, it's half time. And here we have your standard potion of water breathing, except it requires a puffer fish in this recipe. So I grab a minimum, 
I grab a maximum, it won't make a difference. Power level has no effect on this one, but the area of effect will. So if you have a splash range, it will just change where it hits. So I often will recommend at least increasing it with, you know, in almost any splash potion you use, I, I will take the, the a moment to just kind of stop for a moment and say, I recommend you toss in a piece of wood ash just because if, if you're using it as a splash potion, it's not going to hurt to uh, increase your accuracy by doing so. Because <laughs> um, you, you can see how, you know, if I throw it at this block and you see it went into the corner over there, it might have hit one of these other blocks to get a full effect. And the nearby blocks will get the secondary time uh, effect, so it'll be less on there. So I, I do recommend that you increase it a little bit for at least that splash area. Now let's go over to my little water area here teleport to the water and let's jump in the water and it gets very dark I realize this is YouTube you guys can't see things very well uh, yeah thing it, it's kind of crappy so let me look down here and I will splash one here and you can see things are a little bit brighter not much but a little bit you can actually see a little bit better underwater while you have this effect and of course it will give you water breathing which means that your water bubbles will not diminish while underwater of course i'm in creative right now so that is not something that you're seeing but uh, if i did have that on i have tested it it will uh, basically just pause your water your air bubbles <laughs> while you have the water breathing effect and if you have water breathing four guess what nothing changes you just now instead of having water breathing one you now have a four item next to your <laughs> your name there so the power level doesn't really make any difference now let's head on back and here we have resist fire yep like i said still getting into fairly vanilla type potions but hey uh you gotta have some kind of base equipment or a, a way of modifying them to the witchery way now resist fire works as you would expect if you've ever done any vanilla minecraft this here you uh currently if you stand in the fire will take damage you splash this on yourself you'll get the fire resistance effect and fire resistance four versus fire resistance one, no difference. You will therefore, well here, allow me to uh, change my game mode so that I'm in regular. Now, you see I'm on fire, but I'm not taking damage. So I can put that out. Now if I splash my, whoops, I just threw that in the wrong area. Oh well, it's gone. So, but you can see that, you know, it, it effectively level one works the same as level four. If I'm in the fire, I'm currently gonna be you know taking no damage because I was just in lava I'm still burning nothing's happening my clothes aren't even taking damage so let's get in the water just to put myself out and there you go nothing really fancy with that one I did neglect however to mention that it requires a magma cream and here we have a potion of night vision which requires a golden carrot this one here the power effects no difference area of effect just affects the area that it splashes so as expected you hit yourself with a uh, potion of night vision and you get the night vision effect for a minute and a half uh, which it's difficult to see here because I'm pretty much in uh, out in the day but if I go underground it works just like it would in uh, see fully lit up everything is bright and sunny and if I go into a water area it gives you kind of an x-ray vision from the uh, above and a brighter version underwater not quite as dark but it doesn't allow you to see as clearly as you did while you were above the water so and level one versus level four splash, splash brew of owl I believe it's called owl eye doesn't have any difference on how far you can see or how good you can see underwater. That brings us to the potion of invisibility. So with a fermented spider eye and a golden carrot, you can make yourself invisible. So as you can see here, I am visible. Yes, uh, right here in front of you. So if I use this, let's see if I can actually do this on camera here. Toss it up in the air. There we go. You and your witchery clothing will turn invisible provided, you know, you're not holding anything either. Now, of course, you hold items, same as before with vanilla Minecraft. They will show up in there. And if you are wearing armor, it will also show up. Difference between level 1 and 4 is none. Zip. Zero. But 
allow me to demonstrate the whole idea of if you're wearing armor, <laughs> it will uh, actually not disappear. There we go. You can see this guy here who was wearing armor. He disappeared, but his armor is still there. Uh, it also works in a funny way with sheep, but in my opinion, it's actually really, really creepy. Um, let's get a sheep that's facing me here. There we go. Here, here you go. Hey, little guy. How you doing? And now you see he's just walking piece of wool. Oh, how uh, very Silent Hill uh, creepy. Okay. Now that takes us through the first couple of pages of uh, the level two effects here. Uh, and from that, I actually have uh, decided I was going to make my own potion. So let me empty out my bar here. And I think, let's see, I think I've got enough space here. If not, then, well, I'll, I'll work it out. Let's see. Start off with, we need Mandrake, Netherwart, and Tear of Goddess, because we've got a level one, a level two, and a level two spell, and that's actually the order that you need them in. Then Redstone and Obsidian to add some uh, duration to this. A raw fish, a puffer fish, a golden carrot, wood ash, and some glass bottles, which I'm going to uh, do it this way here. We'll get you Balan's Brew of the Merfolk. Now, what's this going to do? Well, I'm going to show you. First, let's uh, go to one of these cauldrons over here. And I actually have uh, leveled up as a brewing witch. So instead of getting one potion, I now get three. So allow me to demonstrate here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh-oh. Oh, that's right. Those were still just the regular ingredients, and I should be all right. And there we go, I got three potions out of that. And of course, because I'm in creative, I got all the stuff back. So let me get all this off my uh, hot bar here. We've got the Brew of Swim Boost, Owl Eye, and Gills. And this gives you three minutes of uh, the night vision, three minutes of water breathing, and nine minutes of uh, the uh, uh, water walking, I guess. Well, water movement. And... <laughs> What this will allow you to do is basically work uh, underwater with a lot more ease. Uh, so you will move very fast. You will, And it's a drinkable potion. So it's going to have ex uh, extra long length compared to a splash potion. And let me get out of that mode. And you can see here I am not in creative right now. Well, I'm in creative, but I am not flying. I am currently swimming. So uh, even running on the gravel, I move fast. I can see a decent amount actually underwater because I have both water breathing and night vision. So it allows me that extra view. Now going up and down is still going to be just as slow as before. So if you do have a flight option, of course, that is much faster underwater. But if not, that's a cheap way that you could possibly do it. It will cost you potentially about a bar of gold for anything that's really worth any cost. Uh, but yeah, there you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm going to be having some more continuing on with this. We're going to be covering the, all the rest of the effects throughout this entire book if I have anything to do about it. So <laughs> don't forget, we have a Discord channel that you can hang out, with, uh, hang out in or just check out the weekly schedule of the channel. If you're interested in supporting us and our content, we have a Patreon account at patreon.com slash mischief of mice. Don't forget to drop a like if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you like our content, and spread the mischief to others. And until next time, folks, I'll see ya.